I am going to call us to order at 7.04. And I have a question first for Mr. Molman. If Mr. Molman wanted to take over the secretarial duties in the absence of Sylvia, because it seems like there was a terrible misunderstanding um, on the bylaws list. But if Mr. Molman would like to take those duties, it's certainly his privilege to do so. The only reason I asked Paul is because Paul took over for Sylvia once in the past, and it's very yep. clerical. Right. No, and, and ironically, though the in time in the past I would have been able to, uh, this time I am unfortunately not able to, as I am actually at a customer site. So I do thank you for that asking. Uh, no worries, and I really apologize for that misunderstanding. Okay, one moment, somebody is saying they didn't get a, a link, but we we are called to order at 7.05, so I'm going to open the floor. Oh, Sylvia is here. Well, that solved that problem. I'm going to open the floor to public comment while I am getting someone a link who didn't get it. So if anybody would like to speak in public comment, I see one hand raised. I see a couple more. This would... I'm going to, this would also include committee members if it's something that you're not going to get to talk on during the meeting. Otherwise, this is for um, guests. I know there's somebody who wants to speak in public comment that I'm getting a link to. But first, Kat McElroy. Hi, thank you. Uh, Kat McElroy, I'm from California. I want to speak on the bylaws proposal that would expand the LNC to a member from each state. Um, I've worked in California for a couple of years. I'm chair of my county party. Uh, I've sat on committees at the state level, and I just there's just not enough people right now. There's we we don't have enough people to fill our committees at the state level. We don't have enough people to fill our committees. Um, you know, across the country. And I just don't know how we could spread people that thin and take the focus away from the states and have everybody just trying to fill seats at the national level. So that's my concern. Um, could you wait one moment, Adrian? I've got to let a dog out the door that's barking. Yes, Madam Chair, of course. <clears throat> okay, I'm back. Adrian? Thank you, Madam Chair. So I'd also like to speak on the same proposal. I have a couple of issues with this. So for those of you that don't know, I am chair of California and I'm an at-large member on the LNC. Uh, a couple of things. First and foremost, California is looking at actually decreasing for a couple of reasons. Those uh, Dr. McElroy already talked about during her public comment, but it, it's just it's too big of a board is already dysfunctional. And we're looking at cutting it down at our next convention. This was already tried in California once upon a time where there was a representative from every county. We have 58 counties here in California. Uh, I think at max, we had about 30 some odd affiliated. This was uh, probably more than 10 years ago when this was tried, maybe 20 years ago. And it was a complete disaster. This was overturned very quickly because you couldn't get people to meetings. You seldom had quorum. When you did have quorum, nothing got done. Our meetings are already incredibly long right now. This would be an absolute disaster all the way One around. One moment, Mr. Maligon. Somebody yes. is uh, making noise in the background. And I don't know who it is. If you're not talking, can you please mute your mic? Because it's not it's impolite to the speaker. So one moment, if everyone, thank you. Okay, continue, Mr. Maligon. Thank you. So I just think that it would be an unmitigated disaster in every respect. Uh, and this is why we're looking at cutting down our board. We are the largest affiliate in the country. I think we have we have 15 XCOM members plus two alternates. We're looking to trim that down, hopefully to about 11. And even that might be a little bit too big. But uh, this is something that we're going to be looking at doing. And then in addition to this, I just have an issue with I know Mr. Molman is the one that proposed this. I, I, I just have an issue with him being on this committee and the way it just doesn't seem particularly forthright. This was not brought up. Uh, several LNC members have brought this to my attention when there was an application for this position that he he didn't he wasn't forthright about putting this forward as part of this committee. And there was there's almost nil chance that he would have been voted onto this committee had he been forthright about his intended proposal here. So uh, I know I certainly wouldn't have voted for it. So I, I just want to make it super clear that I will 
lobby against this very hard. I don't think California will take very much convincing, but we do have over 100 delegates and those are going to be 100 votes lost, give or take, on that particular proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Maligon. Um, Star Child? Yeah, um, well, I would. I, I am also uh, from California. I'm chair of the San Francisco region uh -oh. and uh, former LNC at large. Uh, I support the proposal. Oh, I think that uh, Sorry. the. So, you want anything else besides water? Uh, one moment, so Mr. Mr. Rufo or yeah, whoever you. has you an open case? mic. Thank you. Uh, continue, Star Child. Uh, yeah, I was saying I'm from. Uh, California as well. I'm a uh, past uh, at-large representative on the LNC and chair of the San Francisco party. I run for office half a dozen times here. Um, I think it is super important and critical for the future of the Libertarian Party as a sustainably libertarian organization for us to be a bottom-up, uh, grassroots-oriented party, not top-down. And I think we need a bigger team of people in the leadership uh, I think there's uh, too many people right now uh, filling multiple roles, um, you know, and uh, that includes uh, some of the, those present here and, and no disrespect to any individual. A lot of you work very hard, but I think that, um, you know, one important position like LNC or bylaws or platform committee or state chair uh, is enough for any one individual. You know, any one of those jobs could be a full time task in itself if you really want to put 110 percent in and uh i think it's um something like what the green party has where there's like a larger and i haven't studied this in detail i think this could stand a committee to maybe look at different alternatives um you know there's ways to get around the problems of quorum you could have different mechanisms for that but um having a, a larger group of people involved in overseeing day-to-day -day operations of the party and also, uh, you know, perhaps separately strategic uh, planning and uh, taking positions on things, um, you know, getting a higher volume of uh, resolutions and things like that out uh, on behalf of the party, I think would be good. Um, but, uh, you know, in, in a way that's really more reflective of the grassroots membership and not just, you know, a, a handful of the usual suspects. This is, you know, the way the Republican and Democrat parties get uh, taken over and co-opted basically by people who are in it as a profession uh, rather than citizen legislators. You know, they're dominated by their professional politicians. I'm um, Star Child, and, you're going a bit long for public comment, so. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up. Just, yeah, the, the, the the establishment parties, I think, are, are dominated by these small top-down groups. And if we want to avoid that fate, just being libertarians isn't enough. We have to structurally make sure that we organize and operate our party in a way that is bottom-up and that really builds a farm team of people, not just having a bunch of the usual suspects filling all the important roles. Thank you. Thank you, Starchild. Um, uh, Mr. Maligon, are you back in line for public comment or... I, didn't know. I am not. I thought okay. that Zoom did okay. something where it took the hand down. Oh, OK, thank you. Um, Mr. Boss? Uh, yes, I, I echo uh, having uh, more input from the bottom up, but I see the removal of the delegates voting on the members of the body as a problem and antithetical to that idea. Um, if I were to make a constitutional uh, analogy. It seems like we're getting we're repealing the Seventeenth Amendment, but getting rid of the Supreme Court and the House of Representatives. Uh, just, I, I like the idea of voting on the members of of leadership of the party, and I also echo that it's too big. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boss, Mr. Hines. Uh, hi, uh, my name is David Hines. I'm a lifetime member from the state of Idaho. Um, I was just calling to make comment on the proposal to, to uh, increase the size of the LNC. Um, I can certainly understand the positive intentions of making sure, making certain that every state has a representative on the LNC um, and that kind of, um, you know, way of uh, addressing a representation issue from among the states of various sizes. Um, however, I think that our experience with our own government um, and just with various boards that I've observed um, and been a part of, um, smaller boards are a little bit better uh, in the sense that they don't have um, 
bystander effect and things of that nature. Uh, the accountability is more concentrated. Um, board members can create committees and delegate responsibilities uh, as they see fit so that they're not um, spread too thin. That's what committees are generally for. Um, so I would just say that I, I think a very large LNC would be uh, quite unwieldy and less productive um, and that the LNC, if anything, should move to a smaller uh, executive board. And that's the uh, commentary that I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hines. Mr. Boss, um, I, I was just going to ask you to put your hand down unless there was something you forgot to say. Um, Mr. Benner. Yeah, I would also like to just speak in opposition to that uh, bylaw amendment in general that would drastically expand the size of the current LNC. Um, it's my understanding that Mr. Molman was the architect of this, and I love Mr. Molman. He's a great guy, full of integrity, so it's not personal. But uh, in addition to some of the other arguments that have been raised, I personally asked Jim Cantrell, you know, what he thought of the size of the board and some previous boards that he had served on. He's the founder of SpaceX, been on many successful boards, and he flat out said he thought that our board was just way too big to be efficient anyway. Um, I think that the current size is a concern, so expanding it would even exacerbate that. So um, that's all I'll say. I think that I take his opinion with, uh, with credence. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Benner. Ms. McArdle. Hi. So over the last year and some change, uh, board size has been challenging. It's difficult to get everybody on the same page. I find that we often have people who are, are not pulling their weight and it's, it's no offense to everyone. I think that it shows that board size is um, like Mr. Benner said, it's, it's too large. I offered a counter proposal to shrink the board. And if you think that that is controversial or it raises your eyebrows, I'd ask you to do a little bit of research into the size of effective boards. Uh, Jim Cantrell said we need to shrink our board. So did Roger McCaffrey, who's a longtime, you know, board of directors, experienced guy in the liberty movement and conservative circles. So did two other um, older gentlemen that I asked who have decades of board experience, uh, a guy who was a top executive in Monsanto, uh, my father, who's been in the nonprofit sector for about 35 years, they both said a board of seven to nine people is a reasonable size. I do think that's a, a too big of a stretch for us. And I think that bumping it down to 12 people would be better. But if you're not comfortable with that, I think what you should want to do maybe is table both. Well, consider consider my option, but also table them and look into it later after we actually do effective research, research on how to make our organization more effective because we need to do that for future LNCs. We don't need to hamstring them and make the work harder. And that's all, thank you. Okay, um, thank you, Ms. McArdle. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in public comment? Okay, we, we do have a couple housekeeping things, but I want to give everyone a heads up of a motion I'm going to make once we're done with approving the minutes from the prior meeting. Again, I'm gonna preface this with saying the committee always decides. I don't have any special privileges as chair of this committee. There's a lot of interest both for and against the restructuring proposal. It's not what's next on our agenda. I'm going to move to amend our agenda to make it next. I think this has caused a lot of angst in the party one way or another. And I think everyone wants to know one way or another whether this is going to be considered by this committee, whether it's going to be to another meeting. There's obviously people here who want to hear about it. I think I know there's appetite to put it at the very end. I can tell you the amount of stress this is causing in the party. I I don't want to put it to the very end, but it's going to be up to the committee. But I wanted to let you all think about it while we're doing our housekeeping, because that is a motion I'm going to make. So we have our minutes from the September 7th meeting. I know there were some comments on the list, I believe. So is there any corrections to be made to those minutes? Remember, if you find something later, these are quite informal for our use. You can always let the secretary know changes. But are there ma any ma Madam Chair, have we taken the role yet? Oh, good idea. Thank you, Dr. Moulton. 
I got a little distracted here with my dog barking. Ms. Arrowwood, can you take the roll and then we'll get right to the minutes. Ms. Arrowwood, she might not be able to speak. She had warned me that might be a problem. Mr. Bracco, is it possible you can take the roll? Um, in just a moment here. And I could if he can't. If you are ahead of me on the setup, then I would not be sad. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Latham. Well, I don't know if I'm ahead of you on the setup, but I just I happen to have the uh, minutes from the LNC in which they elected the bylaws and rules committee. So I have the names right in front there. So Ms. Arrowood. Oh, and she's unmuted. Is she available now to take a role or? I don't She's believe a, so. Yeah. Go right ahead, okay. Mr. Latham. All right. So Ms. Arrowwood, I don't know. Do we consider that present or not present? We're going to... <laughs> um, Sylvia, <laughs> can you type in chat? Because if I know that you can hear us, I'm inclined to count you as present. If you can't hear us and type in chat, then obviously you are not present. Let's go, okay. go Maybe back. Maybe we'll come back to her. Uh, Mr. Bracco, I think we know he's here. Present. Thank you. Nicholas Sazelski. I'm here. Chair Harlos. Present. Rob Latham, I am here. Frank Martin. Present. Ken Moman. Here. Tom Rolette. Here. Mike Rufo. Here. Mike Seebeck. Here. And I do see an entry in the chat from Ms. Arrowwood. So that appears that we do have all 10 regular members, Madam Chair, if I've done that right. Okay. If we could also, though, call the alternates. And just one note with Sylvia. Well, I'll get to that after you call the alternates. So now I'm looking in the minutes to where the alternates are listed. And uh, that's not as easy to discern. I, I know them by name. Yeah, Mr. D well, I could do that. Dr. Moulton is the first alternate. Present. Um, oh, thank you. And uh, Mr. Roberson, I think, is the next one. Oh, there they Present. are. No, I'm wrong. My dog just laid the most vicious fart. I can't even tell you. <laughs> I'm glad Ooh. we got that into the minutes. I think that motion is out of order. <laughs> <laughs> Was it said out of odor or out of order? I missed that. <laughs> yes. I'm telling you, this is bad. <laughs> uh, what about Data yeah. Logan? I believe that we had skipped Mr. Tommaso. And he's not here. Um, Mr. Lo Logan's not here. Mr. And Roots Mr. is Roots. here. Okay. I'm present. But not the greatest connection, Roger. Just to FYI. So. Well, okay. I can hear very well. Oh, that was much better. That was much better. And I think that's it for the alternates. Was okay. uh, Mr. Deal called? Oh, no. And he's not here. Dean Rogers is here. And Dean Rogers is here. Yes, I said that before, but I don't know if I got caught because I got distracted by this dog. <laughs> okay. Do you need? No. Oh, I, I think I think we got it. all 10. A full voting members are here. Um. Ms. Arrowwood, now, if if everyone recalls, and it's going to be difficult this meeting, but I'm going to ask everyone to play along as best as they can, and this has already been decided by the committee, I know there's probably going to be some protest. 
If you recall, very early in this committee, we asked for there not to be debate and chat. And I'm going to ask that people on the mic, please do not be responding to comments and chat. And obviously members are gonna talk somewhat, but I'm asking that we keep debate and chat to a minimum. However, since Ms. Arrowwood can only communicate that way, I will relay what Ms. Arrowwood says verbally so we have it on the record verbally. If that doesn't work out, then we're going to count Ms. Arrowwood as absent and Ms. Dr. Moulton will sit in her place. We're going to see how this goes. We're on to the minutes. Is there any objection to approving the minutes? Hearing no objection, the minutes are approved. I am going to make the motion to amend our agenda. We left off in the middle of a proposal, but it's very clear where we're at. It's my proposal. I don't mind it waiting. I'm moving to amend the agenda to move item five up to before item number two. Second. That is debatable. If anyone wants to debate it, I would, I've already said why. I'm going. Let's give the people the Thunderdome they want. It, I'm going to assume there's an objection, but maybe there isn't. Is there an objection to that? But to that amend uh, uh, amending the agenda in that manner. I beg pardon, could you repeat it real fast? I had to step out for half a moment. Oh, certainly. I'm moving to amend the agenda to move up Mr. Molman's proposal, on, and that would also include the alternate proposal if someone's going to be moving it as a substitute up from number five up to number two. And also, I wanted to say something for Ms. McArdle's reference. Uh, the proposal you had sent over to me uh, is it's almost identical to an alternate that's been proposed by Mr. Rowlett. It's very similar. Just wanted you to know that. Okay, okay so is, thank you. Okay. Is there any objection to amending the agenda in this manner? Okay, hearing no objection, we are now on, I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, number five is moved up to before number two. And I'm trying to share my screen. So, but I'm going to give, uh, I'm also, I'm going to make an informal request here. I did ask some parliamentarians if the committee could vote to do this. And if someone wants to make the motion, that's fine. But I think I've been told that you can't, I don't even know how I would rule if someone made the motion. This is obviously a proposals, there's several of them that fit this category that people are very passionate about one way or another. Everyone gets to talk on committees, even if there's a motion to postpone indefinitely, that's a debatable motion. Everyone still gets to talk because you cannot call the question on a committee. So what I'm going to ask is that we not give five minute speeches because you start to lose everyone and I start rolling in the back of their head. However, it's my understanding that the committee cannot say that, cannot limit each time at the mic, even though you can come an unlimited amount of time. I am asking that as a favor. You can do what you want, but I think sometimes we tend to get long-winded. So, Mr. Molman, I am going to be pulling up your proposal, okay. but I'm sure you want to speak to it, so the I mic do. is yours. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I, I heard in public comment a few items specific to the proposal, and I'm concerned that uh, some folks may have missed some of the items in the actual proposal as uh, some of the items that were brought up are directly addressed in the proposal. Uh, specifically, the issues of quorum are specified in the uh, that meetings with lots of notice, uh, the quorum notice, the quorum requirement goes down with basically the more notice you have, the lower the quorum requirement. 
Um, it has automatic resignation mechanisms if you are tardy, tardy, tardy all the time, or missing rather, absent, absent, absent. Um, the main thing, though, I think people are missing is that while the LNC itself grows to a much larger board, the point of that board is not to govern the party day to day. The point of that board is to appoint or hire, in this case, a small board of between uh, approximately seven people, actually. So, uh, and, and someone else has proposed amending it to nine, whatever. I'm fine with seven or nine. I agree that the party, the board is too large. We talked about this over a decade ago, that our board was too big to be a small board and too small to be a big board, and that our party was just in a weird, awkward size. What I'm proposing is both. People argue, we need a big board. People argue, we need a small board. I'm saying both. The small board runs the party day to day, but they are immediately and uh, immediately accountable to the larger board. The larger board has the ability to overturn anything they do. The larger board has the ability to fire them. That is one of the key things of this large board is to hire and fire the executive committee, to approve the annual budget, uh, and to undo any decisions of the executive committee if necessary. That is the vision, that is the point of that larger LNC that then has a much smaller organization that it hires. I do not envision that uh, these would be the same group of people, that it would not be uh, the same seven people uh, from the EC would be the LNC, but I do not limit that because if there happens to be someone on the LNC that's qualified, why limit it? So, um, let's see. Um, I'm fairly certain that uh, people, when they hear what's actually happening here, the point of this is decentralization. Instead of one election happening at convention every two years, and that being the only mechanism for accountability other than the LNC deciding to kick someone off, and that actually is part of what inspired this was the the uh, removal of Ms. Harlow's last term. Who has the right to remove someone? Well, in this case, the board of 51 would be hiring and thus ethically and, and sanely able to fire the executive committee, any member of it. And likewise, the states would be the people who uh, appoint their person on the LNC. And they have the ability based on their state's bylaws to hire and fire that person. So we create accountability, but we make the day-to-day -day board a smaller board that is nimble and fast and can do the things, but immediately accountable to a larger board who is immediately accountable to the members in their state. That is the vision. That's the point. Uh, you know, maybe that's the wrong way, but I, I believe, and, and there are a bunch of reasons, and I've sent those an email, and um, I forget who it was that summarized all that up now, and I apologize, I'm not at home. Um, but that is uh, essentially the, uh, the the proposal, and it does have other pros, but that's, in my opinion, the main reason why people should like it is that it decentralizes the party while making it more stable uh, as well. So thank you. I thank you, uh, Mr. Molman, and I'm probably gonna take several turns because I'm gonna try to keep my own advice of not hogging the mic. Um, I don't think this decentralizes whatsoever because it takes things out of the hands of the delegates and then puts the party in the hands of hired staff. If we want a smaller board, we can do that with the structure we have now rather than this absolutely radical restructuring that's going to hobble the next LNC right after the nomination of a presidential candidate, which is the first thing you have to really worry about after a national convention, and scrambling to make sure that the party is prepared to do this in two years. While I am absolutely opposed to this proposal, no matter what year it was proposed, to be proposing it on a election year and totally crippling the next LNC with having to make sure our structure was in place for this is completely and utterly irresponsible. Consolidating the day-to-day -day operations and decisions down to people who might even just be hired, and then you're saying they can fire them necessarily on the whim or reasoned of 
allegedly 50 plus one state chairs, but I know from working with state chairs, there's going to be about 15 of them that are going to be actively participating. This is taking attention away from them running their states. And I know Ken will say that they can appoint someone else from their states. I know how that goes. And this is actually centralizing power in the hands of the few states that care to pay attention to it, taking things out of the hands of the delegates, absolutely killing our midterm conventions because people are not going to go to a convention just to vote for bylaws. They go because they want to elect an LNC and that's the biggest fundraiser that the party has. And this will absolutely, utterly destroy it. This is completely unwise, untested, and we should not be playing dice with the party in this way. If we want the LNC to be more immediately accountable rather than through removal, let's have a recall position that puts it in the hands of the delegates where they can petition to recall an LNC member. That is decentralization. I have more to say, but I'm going to yield the floor to Dr. Moulton. Uh, thank you. Um, so uh, I have a bunch of comments on this proposal. Uh, so first of all, I I do not support the proposal in general. Uh, I agree with those uh, members who spoke up who said that they thought the board was too big, uh, not too small. Uh, my ideal LNC size would be somewhere between eight and 12 board members. Uh, ideally, all at large, uh, selected with something like single transferable vote. Um, that said, uh, I don't think we should ignore this proposal or or postpone it indefinitely or kill it. Um, I think that underestimates the popular support of this proposal. So I think this bylaws committee should do our best to perfect this proposal and vigorously debate it and make it better. Um, I, I think this proposal will make it to the convention floor, whether or not it comes from the bylaws committee. Um, and, uh, so I, I think we should take this proposal seriously. Um, I, I misunderstood this proposal when I initially read it and having talked more with Mr. Molman and some others about it, uh, I, I think parts of this proposal are, are mislabeled. What he refers to as the executive committee, um, is really staff. Uh, I, I mean, he he wants to these to be paid positions. Uh, I don't think it's in any way appropriate to pay committee members. Uh, it is entirely appropriate to pay staff. Um, there also has been a longstanding debate in the party about whether um, what, there, there ordinarily is a division between the position of chair and chief executive officer or president or so forth in corporations, in nonprofits, in boards. Uh, and there's nothing inappropriate about that. Um, so I, I don't think it's it's bad or the end of the world if the chair of the party is different from the CEO of the party. Uh, if we have a chief operations officer of the party or a paid treasurer or a paid secretary, I don't think any of those are necessarily terrible things. Those all could be staff positions. Um, I. I think that the proposal as written though uh, can confuse some people. Uh, I was initially very confused. Most people I've talked to are very confused about the proposal. When they see executive committee, they're thinking volunteers and there's this question, why are we paying volunteers? Um, I think that the proposal would be made clearer if we took every instance of executive committee and we substituted the words executive staff. Uh, that would make it clear that these are not volunteer positions, this is staff. Uh, I right now I serve as an alternate. Um, we have a full committee compliment, so I can't make that motion. But I would encourage someone in the committee to make that amendment. Um, the, finally, I do have a question for uh, uh, for Chair Harlos, uh, which is if this committee were to adopt instead of this proposal, the alternate proposal proposed by Mr. Rollette, which I do in fact support, um, would it be uh, germane for uh, Mr. Moment's proposal to be a minority report. Uh, thanks very much. 
Okay, I will answer that inquiry, yes, in short. But I want to give a little bit of explanation for this. Uh, the only time you can have a minority report is if something passes out of the committee. So if no nothing touching the structure of the LNC comes out of committee, then no minority report is appropriate. If something comes out of the committee that touches the structure of the LNC, then yes, anything can be a minority report. Did that answer your question, Dr. Moulton? Uh, it did, thank you. Uh, I, I have nothing further at this time. Thank you, Mr. Bracco. Um, I'd actually like to go one step back in line and let Mr. Molman talk since a couple of people had been kind of discussing the proposal. I want to make sure he gets time to respond. Well, okay. You have every right to do that, but I'm going to tell you, I'm calling on people first who haven't spoken. So it would be Mr. Sazelski. Um, everyone's going to have a chance to talk. Okay. Um, I guess I'd like to ask a couple of questions then. So in, let's see what, what article is this now? Uh, article old 11, new six. Um, it's section 2B. Yes. Uh, could you go down a little bit further to, to 2B? Um, I, I guess this, these are actually more questions for Mr. Molman. Um, so within that section, uh, it, it's still further down. M further down. It, it's, we're still oh, in section one. Can you give one. me the letter, please? Uh, two, two B. Uh, two, oh, two. Okay, thank you. So the one member from each recognized affiliate, um, something that I notice is not here, and maybe it's elsewhere and I missed it, but is the intention that each member, regardless of affiliate size, would have equal voting weight in electing the, uh, the whatever we're calling it, the, the paid positions? Yes, it is intended that uh, they would there would be equal from a majoritarian to more of a uh, confederation uh, of sorts where each state is uh, a member of an organization uh, known as the LNC and, and they are voting to do what is in the best interest of the majority of the states. Yes, that is the intent. And I do understand that that is controversial. Okay. Um, and then in section D of the same, um, why limit the selection of chair, vice chair, and secretary to be among its members? Why not from any party member? So the idea there is that the LNC is not supposed to be meeting and doing regular business, right? They, they are doing limited business in order to appoint uh, the, the executive committees. This is creating the chair, vice chair, and secretary of the national committee, the LNC, for the purposes of organization, right? You, you, every committee needs to have, at a minimum, a handful of people uh, that are there. So I, I understand that. I guess my, my question is more... Why limit it to to the that fifty one person group? I don't know. I I don't remember what the well, rationale was uh, on that. Honestly. Okay, we're we're getting into uh, okay. we're getting into okay. crosstalk. Let's okay. Uh, so so I guess my my thought on that is by restricting it to just within that fifty one person group, you are requiring three people to do double duty. Perhaps the best secretary or the best chair was not selected by their state and they would therefore be ineligible. So I think that should be something that should be taken out. No, and, and, and I, I would not uh, object to that. Okay, Mr. Sazelski. Yep, yeah, uh, just some general comments on this and some general thoughts, I guess. So the, the big thing I'm, you know, wanted to bring up, you know, mention on this was that <laughs> 
I don't necessarily see, you know, adding, you know, creating a 50 person LNC is decentralizing things. I mean, we look at Congress, I don't think 435 people there are decentralizing things. The decentralization comes in from us participating in our state parties and, uh, and taking action there. So really it comes down to what's the purpose of the national committee and the national party. And one thing I'm extremely hesitant on is creating a uh, system where uh, each state is basically making up the board there. Because as much as we want to say, idealistically, I think that, yeah, all the states are going to come together and create and, you know, come up with the best thing for the national party. I mean, what it comes down to is everyone's going to be looking, well, what's in my best interest? You know, what gets me something for my state? And uh, that's kind of the natural order of things. And I think that kind of pushes division more than anything else, at least on a lot of different issues. I mean, I, I'm here in Pennsylvania. Um, you know, every affiliate, you know, county or multi-county in some cases where they ha- aren't large enough for that has a seat. Uh, well, used to have a seat on the board and it was a massive board. And then, you know, we made some other changes and, you know, I don't want to get into details there. But what I could tell on the culture of that is everyone was kind of worried about, you know, this is my county. I'm only worried about my county. What is in this or that for my county? So uh, I think part of what we need is a coherent, cohesive national strategy and in a, uh, you know, what are you going to do for me sort of thing. I don't know if, you know, a, a large organization choosing that you know, a large group of people overseeing and choosing that leadership is going to come up with what the best overall strategy could be and probably is best left to the delegates. Um, Thank you, Mr. Molman. Yeah, just a a few responses to a couple of the items here. Um, I, I strongly disagree that it would cripple the next LNC. I mean, obviously, uh, it would take some time to prepare, but not two years. We, we already have documentation on what is done in the office. We already know how the party no, is don't. run. Sorry. <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry. We did. <laughs> um, check the Google Drive. It's still out there. Um it doesn't, as noted, it doesn't have to be state chairs. It can be other people. And I think that's important. I actually don't envision it being state chairs. I originally did envision it being state chairs when I first came up with this years ago. And I got a lot of fierce feedback from LNC chairs who said, I don't want to be on the LNC. It's a shit show. Excuse my language, but that was their language. Um, and it wasn't just one person. And it wasn't this LNC. And that's really the key to this. You ask why does people want to go to the convention to elect an LNC? I, you know, honestly, I've never gone to convention to elect an LNC. I, that's just not who I am anyway. Um, I don't know. That's I, I maybe wonder why I go to conventions, but it isn't to elect LNC. Um, I don't know that a, a member recall is reasonable. I think that might get weird uh, and might get abused. Any system that could be reasonably used could would probably be uh, subject to serious abuse. It, and I, I have the uh, concern of uh, 51 state chairs uh, is indeed fewer than a thousand people voting. And I, but, I, but each of those people is elected in a different way, appointed in a different way, which is how it becomes decentralized. The fact that it's not the same mechanism electing every single person means that it is inherently decentralized. It means that the board is inherently more stable because it cannot get wiped out in one failed swoop, regardless of who's doing the swooping. And I, I think that's important. Um, I have been involved with the party for 17 years. I am a lifetime member and throw that card around, whatever. Um, but I've been involved for 17 years. I've watched this party reboot itself twice. We're on the path again, doing the same thing we do every 10 years. We can either change the structure and hope that other things come to change the pattern, or we can just repeat the 10 year loop. And that's essentially where I think we're at. Um, and it's not anyone's fault. It's not any individual's fault. It's not anyone serving 
currently. It's not anyone serving previously. It's none of their fault. This is just the cycle that we go through as an organization. And I would like to see us do better this time through the cycle. So that's all I have to say about it. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna say several things, some of which are not gonna be popular. Um, we've, and I know this proposal could have come up first, but the fact is it wasn't proposed right away. This committee has spent 10 months now on a ton of proposals that will be moot if this were to pass. There was a lot of talk on the list about respecting everyone's proposals. We have four hours. This proposal alone on the floor will take at least two. Are we really saying as a committee that one person's proposal for something that does not I don't know whether it has majority support on this board, but it certainly is not a super majority support that I actually don't think it has majority support to take up all of our time on, on this when we have other very systematic problems in the bylaws, this does not create more stability because there's no method at all if 20 states don't send anybody, which is going to happen. You talk about being able to remove the staff. There's no mechanism to remove the state representatives who don't show up or don't do their job. This is inherently way more unstable it is going to lead to a handful of states controlling everything. It's going to be a lot more opaque. While we're on a bylaws committee where we might be the type who will go to a convention for other purposes, that is not your average member. They're not. That's why our presidential conventions are so much bigger because people want to go to nominate the president. If we say took the presidential nomination away, I'm not suggesting that obviously, and put it in the hands of the LNC, we would kill our presidential nominations. People are not gonna go to convention and spend that much money and travel that far. The people in the surrounding states would go. And then you have the bylaws being controlled by that. Um, I heard a lot of hope and change. Um, I'm not willing to risk this party on hope and change. There are much less extreme ways to solve perceived problems. We can make the LNC smaller. We can do that with the other proposal. I do not possibly see how a recall thing where you make it a very high percentage of either the delegates or of the sustaining members is any more ripe for abuse than an LNC allegedly that is de facto going to be controlled by less than half of the state chairs or state parties. I'm using chair as a, as a shorthand. We have absolutely no proof of concept here. And being on the LNC in the administration part, being national secretary for my third term now and region one representative before, this will cripple the next LNC. And I, to me, that's, that's just a fact. This, here's what I'm gonna say that's unpopular. Um, in order, we, we could spend the rest of our time together as a committee amending this thing. And I don't think that's respectful to the rest of the committee. Um, I don't think something so massive should be imposed upon the time of everyone of this committee. However, I think Dr. Moulton actually had a good point. If there's a feeling that we don't want to spend the next 10 meetings talking about this, but we want to give Mr. Moulton the opportunity to perfect it with whatever group of supporters he can get, then let's pass the alternate. The alternate proposal is simple. It solves half of the perceived problems. And if someone wants to come up with a recall one, I have language from whatever years before. But to me, two years is not that long. People will just elect a new LNC. So um, it, I actually am going to encourage the committee to just stop debating and vote it down. That I, I'm going to vote no on it. Like, I don't want to pass either proposal. I don't want to pass the alternate either, but I'll pass the alternate to get that as the primary other than this. But I'm recommending that we've got a lot of work to do 
And I, I wish we would just go to a vote. I, I actually would like to hear from the committee if anyone wants to get to the mic, that if a vote were ha had on this right now, how would you vote? So we can see if there's even a majority support for the idea. I don't think there is, and we shouldn't be wasting our time. If there isn't even a majority support for the idea, I'm a no. I would love to hear from the other committee members if we were to vote on this now, what their vote would be. Okay, who hasn't spoken? Okay, I got Mr. Latham, Mr. Roulette, then Mr. Martin, if, at least for the next three up. And, and Madam Chair, I actually rose my raised my hand to ask the question I asked in the uh, listserv. I didn't get a response, and it's a, basically a question, a parliamentary inquiry. It, and it may affect just whether this type of proposal might get proposed in the future. Can we do a two convention or four year proviso? So let's say this gets brought up in 2026, um, a midterm convention, and we say this is actually not going to go to, into effect until 2030. Is that, can we do that? Yes. Okay. Um, and, and just you asked for our, where we're at on these. I'm, I'm I'm in the no camp again, not because I don't think there are some good ideas in either of these proposals. I just think the timing is not good. I I would prefer that we postpone this indefinitely. That we might take it up later. I don't think it needs to be a huge distraction if we don't let it be a huge distraction. And then if we have time at the end of this committee's work, we could take it up again. And as Dr. Moulton said, maybe just have something. Uh, in the report as a proposal out there if there is an appetite for it. But I, I think for a lot of what's already been said, it's just not good timing to do that at this coming convention. I want to give you some parliamentary information. While um, a motion to postpone indefinitely is in order, it doesn't do anything because you can amend takes priority over it. It, it doesn't and it's fully debatable. It doesn't do anything. So if we want to dispose of this, it needs to, I mean, it could be postponed to another meeting. I want to get it over with personally, but I'm just letting you know, parliamentary wise, a motion to postpone indefinitely really doesn't do anything. Um, Mr. Roulette. Thanks. Uh, I'd just like to say, I think that my ideal outcome for this would be for the, for my proposal to be the main motion that gets passed out. And for Mr. Molman's proposal to be the minority report, uh, if that gets, but the reason for that is th this has got people kind of riled up. Something, this is going to come up at the convention floor, uh, regardless of whether or not we propose it. Like if it's not, if it doesn't come from us, it's going to come from somebody saying, I want to suspend the rules to debate a restructure of the LNC thing. And then they'll have to deal with that instead. I would rather have it be from us than from, you know, some rando on the convention floor. Uh, I, and that's it. Um, I like my proposal best, of course. But if if I'm the only one, or if Mr. Molman is the only one who votes for his to be a minority, uh, I'll I'll throw my vote in there for his too. I think that both of these ought to be considered by the delegates. Uh, I don't think that they'll debate it for two hours, I think. But yeah, on that point, on the time for debate, um, this is a big deal. It's a bigger deal than a good 75% of the other proposals in, uh, in our lineup here. I think that if we do this about three or four other things and nothing else, that's better than if we knock out a whole bunch of the little stuff, but that's just me. I'm also with you. Uh, I'm strongly opposed to kicking this down the road till uh, till January and seeing if we can take it up then. I, I think we should deal with this now. And uh, there you go. Okay, thank you, um, Mr. Martin. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
So um, first, I want to thank um, Mr. Molman for developing this proposal. Um, I agree that the LNC could use some, you could use a makeover. Um, I was a uh, founding chair of this, uh, the new affiliate here in New Mexico. And I didn't have a lot of interactions with the LNC, but those that I did have or would have had, would have liked to have, there were some, there were some issues. Um, so I appreciate the work that went into this, the creativity. Um, and I would like, so what I would like to see happen is that this be brought up to the next bylaws committee, along with some competing proposals so that we could look at some alternatives and make some choices like that, um, with some research behind it. Um, because I, 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 I really am not equipped myself to know what the best solution to this problem is. I, I, but I acknowledge that what we've got is not, you know, needs work. So I, again, I appreciate the work that's been done. I wanna see more done. If I have the honor of serving on, a, on the next committee, uh, I would hope to uh, have this and, and other proposals for restructuring the LNC come before us. Um, but uh, at this time, I, I will be voting no on this on this proposal, and that's uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, now we are back with people who've spoken before. I'm trying to get it. Okay. Uh, well, crap. Uh, I, I'm just going to go to Mr. Latham. Yeah. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. To Mr. Roulette's point that the delegates will bring it up from the floor. I just want members to recall our earlier debate on whether this proposal and proposals like it would be a revision or not. And I believe we had a ruling that it was not a revision, um, if, I, if I remember that correctly. But we still might have people argue that it is a revision. And I think there was something in, that, in our discussion on whether it's a revision or not a revision. This committee is authorized to address revisions or propose revisions, but revisions from the floor are not authorized. And and if that that interpretation, I guess, carries in a convention, and I guess it wouldn't because we would be asking the same person who said something like this is not a revision to then rule at convention that it is a revision, um, I don't think it would still get the two thirds that it would need to suspend the rules to take it up. Um, so I want to throw that scenario out there just as a consideration. And then just for what it's worth, I, I also agree. I would like more information on organizational behavior and you know proper construction of boards like ours. But boy, we're we're very unique. Um, we're not a corporate board where board members have skin in the game and that kind of thing. I mean, people show up and get to vote. Um, and it's it's just it's a different dynamic. And that's some people know I'm a curious about something called sortition where you do things like random like on juries and and part of me wonders if that's at least part part of a piece of the puzzle that that could help here so that that's it for now thanks okay mr seebeck hasn't gotten to speak at all mr seebeck um yeah i've got two things here one to address mr latham's point um, when we discussed the question of a revision on um, bylaws versus a versus a, just a pile of amendments in Colorado, we arrived at the conclusion that it wasn't a revision for what we were proposing, even though there was a lot of amendments. Um, I think this proposal doesn't rise to the level of what would be considered to be a revision. Um, that being based on that experience. Second thing is that a while back in the chat, uh, Ms. McArdle made a comment that this proposal was not financially feasible. And I'm wondering if the body wouldn't mind and if the chair permits, if we could have Ms. McArdle uh, um, address that point. I think it'd be something to think about. Um, I We're not going to be doing debate with members in chat. The committee can overrule me, but that has already been 
uh, something we, we decided on this committee. Now, if, if Ms. McArdle raises her hand, then the committee could decide whether they want to hear from her, but we're not interacting in chat. But Ms. McArdle is free to raise her hand and I'll put it to a vote of the committee whether they want to hear from members. Okay, we're gonna go, I, I'm just gonna go Mr. Sazelski, Mr. Molman, myself. I didn't even know I had was up, sorry. Okay, then Mr. Molman and then myself. Madam Chair, if you don't mind, uh, given it's my proposal, I would like to have the last word before we move to a vote, if that's possible. That's not possible on a committee. If someone raises their hand after you because they want to rebut it, they can. Um, you okay. can ask the committee for that indulgence and people can voluntarily choose to do that. So okay. I'll note that you made that request. Okay. Well, I'm going to lower my hand and no raise it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I've been, some people have specifically said uh, what their vote would be and uh, I'm drawing conclusions um, from others haven't heard from everyone, but I, I think I know some of the others. I, I don't think there's a majority support for this. Um, if, if we were to vote right now, I think I'm counting pretty sure there's probably six or seven no's. Um, and I do not believe the committee should be spending its time on this. However, if, if that's the way we're gonna go, uh, I'll end up moving the alternate from Mr. Roulette. But however, I want to let you know that voting the alternate would just be a survival technique because I do think this, I, I literally do think this proposal is an existential threat to our organization. Um, I don't want us to be touching this, uh, the necessarily the structure of the LNC, this convention, but the least destructive way to do it is to just reduce the size. This is not going to get heard from the floor. There is not a snowball's chance in heck that there's going to be a two thirds vote to, I printed this out and it's like 50 pages long when you, when you do all the, what, this is not going to get heard from the floor. What might get heard from the floor is eliminating regionals and replacing them with at larges and a lesser number, because that's very simple and people can understand that. I have a feeling that will get moved from the floor if we, if we don't uh, move it out of committee. Uh, but I really don't want to move either out of committee. But if I have to choose between the two, I will choose the other. Um, if someone wants to move that other one as, you know, a substitute, they can. Otherwise, I'm just recommending we vote this down and move on. Mr. Molman. Yeah. Sorry, I was uh, helping a coworker here. Uh, yes. Uh, listen, I, I am... Glad that we at least got to hear what this was about. That was really my purpose in proposing it more than anything is to inspire people to consider ways that the organization can be made better, ways that resolve known structural problems, things we've known about in the party for at least a decade, if not longer. And I'm not saying that my way is the right way. I'm not saying my way or the highway. I'm saying that what we have now, we have 20 something years of history to prove isn't the right way. And we do need to do something. What that is, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I personally have my own, like every libertarian, personal pet things, uh, accountability and you know checks and balances, and as Daniel Hayes likes to call them, my Rube Goldberg devices. Uh, but I, I'm I'm just glad that we're having the conversation, and I am glad that uh, most of the folks were respectful this evening, and I thank you all for your time. Uh, if I could move to a vote, I would, but we can't do that in committee, but that is all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Molman. Um, it goes to a vote when debate is done, so we'll go to a vote if there's no further debate. All right, Ms. Arrowwood, if you would take the role of the committee, or excuse me, she can't. Uh, Mr. Latham? Uh, yes. Uh, can you take a roll call vote? 
yeah. It, I, I would be in a position to do so as well. If you okay, but let's, oh, let's, let's let Paul do it. Okay, okay, Mr. Bracco, if you would go ahead. Thanks, Paul. All right. Um, and we are treating Miss Arrowhood Arrowwood as present for this vote. Correct? If if she responds promptly in chat, if she, okay, she already did. All right. Um, so yes, we are. Uh, okay. I am also going to be a no, Mr. Sisselski. Uh, I'm sorry. I I missed what the exact motion is. It, uh, it's moving this uh, proposal of Ken Mullins. Uh, no. Mr. Latham? No. Mr. Martin? No. Mr. Mullman? I vote yes, of course. Mr. Roulette? No. Mr. Rufo? No. Mr. Seebeck? Mr. Seebeck, if you said something, I did not catch it. No. Thank you very much. Madam Chair, the current vote is, I believe it's eight, or it's one yes to eight, yes, eight no's. So the current vote is one yes to eight no's. Okay, I normally don't vote, but I feel so strongly on this. I am going to, I want a vote on the record as no. All right. Mr. Rollett. Okay. I think what I want to do is move the substitute now. Okay. Let me pull that up. And just parliamentary wise, so the committee knows when that was all under number five, so it is in order. When we're done with number five, we're going back to number two. Just in case anyone got confused. So here is the substitute. Um, if you, you would like to explain what it does, because I do believe it's very similar to the member submission we got from Ms. McArdle. I will invite her comment, a brief one in chat if she thinks it's not, because she's more familiar. Uh, but anyway, Mr. Roulette, the floor is yours. Sure. This is uh, a proposal basically to shrink the uh, LNC down to 11 people, uh, the four officers, and then seven uh, at-larges. No, yeah, yes, seven at-larges. It gets rid of the regionals. There are pros and cons to that. Uh, I, I don't want to go too much into detail about that, but I think that... Uh, I think that doing this will actually make the organization more effective just generally. Uh, it won't break my heart if this doesn't pass, it, but I, it does seem important. I do think it'll get brought up by somebody. Well, I'm not going to start a campaign for it, but I can see that somebody might uh, move this from the floor if we don't put it into a report. Uh Having said that, vote your conscience. Do you think it would be, the LNC would be better uh, in the status quo, or do you think it would be better if it was uh, 11 people, four officers, and uh, seven at larges? And there you go. Okay. Um, Mr. Molman? Yeah, hi. Um, I, as noted before, I am in favor of reducing the size of the whatever body is in charge of the day-to-day -day organizational doings. Uh, but I, I have concerns about making them at largest. Uh, I, if you're going to reduce, I'd rather see seven regionals uh, so that there is some sort of accountability back to uh, people between conventions. Because uh, that is a big deal. Uh, there is the, the real possibility that, uh, you know, there it could be an issue. In two years is a long time. Special conventions are not a real thing. Uh, Ms. Harlow mentioned in a previous item that, uh, or I'm sorry, the chair, excuse me, my, my sincere apologies. The chair mentioned in the previous debate uh, that uh, we could have some sort of recall pr provision. But in uh, further debate, it sounded as though to avoid abuse, the threshold would be pretty high. 
to actually get such a petition going. Um, and, and that that could be interesting as well, whether it's all membership globally or if it's uh, previous convention delegates or who is it that gets to do it. And it's, you know, that, that gets complicated in and of itself uh, since the party membership, as we all know, uh, has some bit of a revolving door effect to it. So I, that's just my thoughts on it. Uh, I'd rather see seven regionals rather than seven at largest. Um, and if you haven't noticed, that is one of my bugaboos that I mentioned before. So thank you. I'm done. Thank you, Mr. Moulton. I had myself next in line. Um, I'm going to encourage the committee to vote it down. Uh, I, I don't want to get from the stage um, into a minority report with that other huge proposal. I think it, it it's going to bog down this committee with the other proposals we've done. If it gets moved from the floor, fine. But then there isn't an autumn, there isn't a minority report. I don't want to see. Uh, to me, it having this is a backdoor way of getting that other one to eat up convention time, and I'm opposed to the other one. However, I'm not going to be voting on this unless it's to cause or break a tie. But I'm urging the committee to broke it, break uh, vote it down and let it come up from the floor if it needs to come up from the floor. I do want to argue though, and I, I would love. I know I probably will not convince Mr. Molman, but I know I'll give him some food for thought. The regional system's a nightmare, and I'll tell you why. I was a regional, and Dr. Moulton used to joke, and he'll remember this joke, that I was bringing back the pork for Region 1. And I most certainly was, because I was there to represent Region 1. It, we have found, particularly this term, but I've seen it in every term, there is, you're serving two masters, and is the ultimate fiduciary of the regionals to the region or is it to the party as a whole? And I think the LNC needs to be to a, as, as to the party as a whole. We had a situation, um, I'm gonna tread very carefully because I'm not looking to um, demean anyone or anything like that, but it was the opinion quite obviously by the censor that was done on the LNC that we had a regional that was compromising their fiduciary duty to the LNC. Judge for yourself, the LNC already made its judgment on it. We can't, and that is a removable offense. I, you know, I'm very high threshold for removing, but breaking confidentiality and things like that are removable offenses. And we couldn't do a thing about it. And we had uh, at least one state in the region at question that was absent as happens in every region. You could have a regional that is absolutely violating everything, torpedoing the LNC. And if the region is absent, or if the region just doesn't like the LNC and wants to throw loci in there at the expense of the rest of the states, it's just the regional system has never worked. That's the bigger problem with our LNC is the regional system. Now, I do have that old proposal for recall. It can be a high threshold of delegates, but to kind of work in Mr. Molman's idea from his other proposal, or it can be a certain number of state chairs. How about a majority of the state chairs can remove somebody? I think that actually is not a bad idea. And then you have direct accountability. So a certain percentage of and I don't mean a majority vote, I mean a literal majority of all of the state chairs, so 26. Um, that will put in accountability. And maybe somebody wants to bring that proposal up. But I'm suggesting we vote this down. If it comes up from the floor, fine. We've got other things to worry about, like electronic voting, which is a huge issue, and notice is a huge issue. And both of those proposals are gonna eat up a lot of floor time and we've already passed them out of committee. Thank you. Oh, um, Mr. Bracco, Mr. Latham, and then Dr. Moulton. Dr. Moulton, I only put you behind because you're an alternate right now, but everyone will get to talk. So Mr. Latham. Is it Mr. Um, Latham or me? Uh, oh, oh no, I... sorry. 
Who did I say before? It, well, you said Bracco, then Latham, and then uh, I'll, I'll defer me. to Mr. Latham. Okay, Let's Mr. Latham, <laughs> Mr. Bracco, then Dr. Moulton. Okay, and I'll actually just indicate I'm I'm kind of favorable toward this in terms of the getting rid of regions, uh, regional representatives. That said, the big concern I have is that seven members at large, and then currently are five members at large, they're not elected proportionally. And that means that 50% plus one of the vote means that a certain group of delegates could get 100% of the representation. And that is kind of a disproportionate way of representing the members of our party. So, and whereas proportionally elected representatives from all across our, our membership could be elected on regional platforms, they could be elected on specific issue platforms, like I want to focus on ballot access, or I want to focus on um, fundraising. Um, that can happen with proportional representation. We're not quite set up to do that, of course, in our rules yet. So again, that comes, I, I, so I'm leaning against this because this potentially just concentrates, uh, you know, representation in a 50% plus one group. Um, and, and the members could decide to diversify the at-large a bit, but that there's no guarantee that that would happen. So um, th those are my concerns. I don't know how I'll vote on this, but I'm I'm kind of leaning against it for that reason. And then I'll just, I think the other concerns about the timing is, is also a problem. Um, but I think we could maybe fix those with provisos. So I don't know. I'm, I'm still undecided on this. Mr. Bracco. I'd like to echo Mr. Latham's concern about the um, the voting system. Um, approval voting is terrible and sh should be thrown into a fire to die. Uh, and this doesn't do anything about that. I I like the idea of it at the highest level, like shrinking the LNC. Sure. No problem with that. Getting rid of regions, even like explicitly pro getting rid of regions. Um, but I, I really don't think that this is, is a, it's, it can't, I don't think it should be done without some kind of change to the voting system. And we just don't have that yet. And we, even if we were to pass another one, um, I guess we could make this some kind of conditional, but unless we were to do that and I, I would not be in favor of it without that condition. And we don't have that right now. So I, I wouldn't be in favor of it. Additionally. Um, and I think I had sent you a proviso, Mr. Roulette, and I, I thought you indicated that you were intending to add it, but I don't see it here. Is there intended to be no proviso? I'm going to let Mr. Roulette answer that question. Uh, yeah, I um, maybe I flaked on that. I did intend to put your proviso at the bottom, that it would go into a, a, just word for word what you had posted. Okay, uh, I do have that me, language. Okay, yeah, if you've got it handy, uh, definitely. Uh, all right. Um, if if we need to, then um, I would like to move to amend the proposal to uh, include the proviso that I put in chat. Okay, let me grab it out of chat. Could you read it aloud? Sure. Proviso, the regional representatives and alternates elected by the final adjournment of the 2024 National Convention or the replacements according to their regional agreements will serve until the adjournment sine die, I think I might be mispronouncing that, but anyway, of the 2026 Convention under the rules of the national bylaws as they existed when the original representatives and alternates were elected. No regions will be formed in 2026. Okay, thank you. Um... Is there any objection to that proviso? Say it verbally, be since there's hands raised, waiting to talk. Okay, hearing no objection, that proviso is added. Dr. Moulton. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I agree with uh, a lot of what everyone has been saying here. Um, I, I agree with uh, Chair Harless uh, about the problems of regions. Um, in addition, 
a problem with regions not mentioned is that talent is not necessarily evenly distributed among regions. Um, I, I have seen, uh, I have a long history in the party. Uh, I have seen region elections when everyone looks around and just says, um, anyone want to do this? Um, and no one is really that interested. Uh, I've seen other regions where there are many, many talented people who could bring a lot to the LNC and you can only pick one of them. Uh, so I I strongly prefer at large to regionals for that reason. Uh, I agree with uh, Mr. Bracco and uh, Mr. Latham that uh, number one, approval voting should die in a fire and is horrible. Uh, and number two, some form of proportional representation would, would be better. Uh, I prefer single transferable vote, but even cumulative voting uh, would be better than majority voting and better than uh, approval voting. Um, I, I will note before we had approval voting, when we just had majority voting, um, it was very often the case that minority views could make it on at large. So we had several presidential conventions when uh, people would be elected at large who were, were not in favor of the presidential ticket that was chosen, uh, which shows that the delegates would show, choose different things for, for LNC than the direction they went with, with president. Um, but, so certainly I think we should, ought to fix the voting method. Uh, I don't think that uh, we, we need to do one before the other because we can keep arguing about what needs to come first and that could lead us to inaction where nothing happens. Uh, I, I think fundamentally the point of this proposal uh, and why I support it so much is this is pretty near to the ideal size of a board uh, like the Libertarian National Committee. Ideal size of a board is eight to 12 members. This is 11 members. Uh, you know, it might be nicer to have it even less, maybe 10, but this this seems like something that could conceivably pass. And I think it would uh, fix a lot of the dysfunction that we have had uh, on the LNC for many, many years. So I strongly support this proposal. I would encourage committee members to vote for it. Uh, if it does not pass out of committee, I would uh, strongly encourage it to be proposed by the floor, uh, perhaps by our LNC chair uh, or a similar proposal, if not this exact proposal. And uh, I, I hope that we adopt this sort of structure. Thank you. Okay, I am next. Um, Dr. Moulton made a lot of really strong points. Uh, I have something to run by the committee, perhaps, um, because there is going to be certain on-the-fly authority I'm going to be asking from the committee when the report is being presented to, in order to read the room, but that's going to be up to the committee. The committee can pass this with an internal proviso just as instructions to your committee chair um, that the committee is instructed for someone to come with maybe a cumulative voting proposal and that will get ordered first and that the committee chair is directed not to move this proposal if the cumulative one doesn't and then it would have to be moved from a, the floor with a two-thirds suspension um if we I'm, I'm starting to get persuaded i mean the regionals are a real problem and I say that as someone who was a regional representative, it, it was a real, they're, they're a big problem. And D Dr. Moulton even just made the point even more like things that I knew instinctively, but he gave voice to it in a way that I wasn't doing a great job at. So I also agree though, with the uh, that this has a better chance of passing if there's something like cumulative voting. I've been in favor of cumulative voting for a while. I like single transferable vote better, but until we have a really solid electronic voting system, that that's just off the table. We might as well say we we would love for the Oracle of Delphi to tell us the best people. Like let's deal with reality. We can't do STV right now, um, but what we can do very easily is cumulative voting. So the committee can pass this provided that the committee pass a cumulative voting proposal direct. The committee can also decide we will order it so that no matter where we put this cumulative voting will come first and instruct the chair.
to skip this item on the report if cumulative voting doesn't pass. That's it. I'm not making any of those motions, I'm leaving it up to the committee. As I said, I'm I'm not voting on this. Um, Mr. Latham, unless it's to cause or break a tie, sorry. So uh, a question, and, and yeah, I think cumulative voting, so it's not a pure proportional system, but I understand that it's at least semi-proportional. So I think that might be better than approval. My, my question, the re reason I raised my hand, actually I said under our current system, we could get all five at-larges elected with 50% plus one, but isn't it actually more accurate to say that they could we could elect all five with a plural plurality um, rather than a majority, Madam Chair? That will concentrate even more. But is that accurate? that you don't need a majority under approval. You could elect all five with a plurality. No, uh, our bylaws w or the, okay. The default is a majority. I'm trying to just answer without doing any debate. A default is a majority. However, because these aren't officers, um, well, no, the bylaws, I, I, I think we've, fucked up in the past and maybe JJ, uh, sorry, excuse my French, um, JJ perhaps could say in chat, um, I, I think we've messed up before and violated our bylaws where we said, where we like suspended the rules and because we ran out of time. I actually don't think we can do that. I think it has to be a majority unless the bylaws allows for it not to be a majority. But I'm I'm trying to see if JJ answers this in chat. Okay, so it's still an open question for me. So, um, and if I can just maybe add one more point, the way uh, I, I think I'm, I'm leaning to favoring the idea of, even though I may support this proposal and concept, the idea of not defeating it in this committee, so it could be brought up from the floor to preempt the idea of you know, I'm an order report and that kind of thing, uh, that might be the way to go here. And in the meantime, I would hope that this committee would uh, take up a cumulative voting proposal as well to pair with this. So I like that approach. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Roulette and Mr. Bracco. Okay, uh, Mrs. Harlos, I move to put in whatever proviso you would like. Yeah. I didn't say I would like it. Uh, so let me give you some language and the committee can perfect it. And there was something else I can't, I'm gonna ask the committee's indulgence because I, I do wanna throw something else out there because you might wanna consider this instead, Mr. Rollette. You could also consider an ins moving an instruction to the committee to pass a cumulative voting proposal. It be absolutely last in our report and the chair is instructed to move it immediately if this proposal comes up from the floor or something similar to it. So we don't necessarily pass this out of committee, but you guys have given me, I don't want to say a weapon, a tool that I'd only move if something like this came from the floor. Because you guys can instruct me in all different kinds of ways um, to be able to give uh, some flexibility. So that's all I'm going to say. And JJ's trying to answer my parliamentary question. A, sec a secret ballot is not well our bot yes we use secret ballots uh, allegedly the, the delegation chairs sometimes would know they they are i'm not even going there um kind of uh so mr roulette uh, I like the the first way better than the second okay. where we have a cumulative voting one first and then if that passes, then we go to this. So let me try to come up with some language. This is kind of like 
like an internal proviso. So this approval is conditioned upon the committee passing a cumulative voting proposal and then the committee chair, okay, no, excuse me. And then the committee will put the cumulative voting proposal prior to this proposal in the report. I know this is awkward. It, this isn't gonna go in our report. So this is just our internal instructions. In the report and only move this proposal if the cumulative proposal passes. Cumulative voting proposal passes. This can be worded ugly because these are internal instructions. And JJ, just let us know we, we've fucked up, excuse me, we screwed up our bylaws multiple times in the past by electing um, at larges with less than a majority. Water under the bridge. Okay, Mr. Roulette, did you wish to speak any more to that? Nope, I don't care what kind of voting you use, uh, but everybody else seems to care, so go for it. Is there any objection to this internal proviso? Objection. Yes, there is. Uh, so we'll go to debate, Mr. Seebeck. Yeah, it seems to me that we're just, we're trying to hammer a dead horse here. This is getting down a, down a rabbit hole of absurdity. I understand the sentiment of wanting to get rid of the regions and make and making the, the LNC more efficient with smaller size, but we're, trying to make this into, it has to be exactly right to do this when frankly, it's not, this is just gonna confuse everybody. I'm not a fan of at large seats in general, but that's not here nor there. The reality of it is, is that we've been spending all this time on this, on this meeting discussing these two proposals. I'm gonna vote against this one and I guess all parts of it for the reason that, that the chair brought up earlier and that is that it would create the possibility of a no report and, and, and that mess on the floor. I don't think that this is something we're going to resolve in this committee with the amount of proposals we have and the amount of time we have left and the ones unheard. So let's so set this aside. Let's let's look at it at some other in some other year. Let's get the rest of our business that we got to get done done. Figure out what we have to do to, to lean up our way too many proposals and get a report organized for the convention that actually is something that will be palatable to be done within the four hours that we have within the convention time frame, rather than trying to keep at piling on and piling on. Hey, thank you, Mr. Seebeck. Um, we had Mr. Bra Mr. Martin who hasn't spoken on this and then Mr. Bracco and then myself. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just wanted to echo what uh, Mr. Seebeck said. Uh, I, I guess, uh, you know, I don't think it's wrong to, to go to work on these things now, but I think that uh, moving on uh, to other things is probably the best way for this committee as a whole to proceed and uh, recognizing that, yes, the regional system uh, <clears throat> Maybe needs maybe needs to be overhauled or or lost altogether. Thank you. That's all I have. Uh, thank you, then, Mr. Bracco. I think I I've also been convinced by Mr. Seebeck. However, I would say I would still support the internal proviso, though I'm pretty sure I'm going to be a no on the proposal overall, because I think the proposal is better with an alternative voting system than without one. Okay, thank um, thank you. I, I don't wish to speak on the proviso. I forgot we were on the, I want to speak on the main motion. Uh, so we are going to vote on the proviso. Mr. Bracco, if you could call the roll. And the internal proviso, the other proviso passed. Sure. Um, 
Miss Arrowwood. She'll type in. She said no. Okay. Um, I will be a. This is the proviso. The internal proviso. I will be a yes, Mr. Sasselski. Mr. Sasselski. All right, uh, Mr. Latham. Yes, on the proviso. Mr. Martin. Yes. Mr. Molman. Sorry, I abstain. Mr. Roulette? Yes. Mr. Rufo? Mr. Rufo? All right. Mr. Seebeck? No. Coming back around, Mr. Soselski? Mr. Soselski? All right. Uh, Mr. Rufo. Hmm. Then uh, Matt, you'll you'll go to alternates. Go, go to the alternates now? Okay. So Dr. Dr. Moulton would be first. Uh, I vote yes. All right. Uh, Mr. Roberson. Mr. Roberson. All right. Would it be appropriate to move to the next alternate? Yes. Sure. Mr. Roots. Mr. Roots. Oh, he's here. We had all the odd alternates. Well, if he's None not answering, you'd go to Mr. All Rogers. Right. Mr. Rogers. Yes. Okay, so let's see, one, two. <laughs> Madam Chair, we have six yeses, two noes, and one abstention. Yeah, I will not be voting. So the proviso passes. I had my hand up to speak on on on, on the main motion. Um, Madam Chair. Oh yes, Doctor. Uh, I, I, I just had a point of personal privilege. I just like to point out that the uh, alternates that were voting are fine people. They are not odd or if there's nothing wrong with them. Sorry. Oh, they're I just very, had to throw they're very just... odd. <laughs> you know, compared to the rest of us, though, I'm just saying. You've met Dr. Moulton. I'm not going to get a zinger from Dr. Moulton. I'm so disappointed. Okay. Speaking on the main motion, I'm encouraging us to vote this down. However, I could tell you, um, I'm going to put it on the back burner for when we're, we're done with everything. Uh, but when we get done with everything, I'm going to encourage the committee to give the chair a cumulative voting proposal to have in her back pocket in case this gets moved and passed from the floor. Because I just thought of a problem with this internal proviso. What if we pass cumulative voting and then this fails and we end up with cumulative voting for the at large and still have regionals? I'm not so sure I like that. So I'm encouraging everyone to vote this down. but before convention to give me a tool in case this gets moved from the floor. Mr. Latham. I'll, I'll just say I'm actually okay with if we went to cumulative voting rather than approval voting. And unfortunately we didn't get rid of regionals, at least that's partial improvement. So I that's okay by me. Okay, I just wanted everyone to know the implications. Mr. Bracco. Uh, parliamentary inquiry, if this were to fail, and a similar proposal were to be moved later on that included not only this change to make it at larges, but also a cumulative voting proposal, uh, cumulative voting as part of one proposal. Would that count as a reconsideration or no? Yeah, you'd, you'd have to reconsider. OK, thank you very much. In order to preserve your reconsideration rights, um, you have to not be on the losing side of this vote. You can be an abstention. Unlike a full board where you have to actually be on the winning side, there's a slight twist on committees. You just have to not be on the losing side. Okay, so I think we're going to a vote on, because I don't see any further hands on this proposal with both provisos passed.
And I, I, I know there's objection because I'm a no. Uh, well, if I were to vote. Uh, Mr. Bracco, if you could call the roll. All right. Uh, Ms. Arrowwood, is that no from you? Is that an artifact of the internal proviso? Or is that your vote? That was an artifact. Yeah, that's her last vote. So give her a moment right. and go to somebody else and we'll see. Um, all right. I am a no. Mr. Soselski. Mr. Soselski. All right. Mr. Latham. No for the purposes of this committee. And I see Ms. Arrowwood is now voting no again. All right. Thank you. Mr. Martin. No. Mr. Molman. No. Mr. Roulette. Yes. Mr. Rufo. He's not Mr. here. Okay. Uh, Mr. Seebeck. No. Dr. Moulton. Yes. Mr. Roberson. Mr. Roots. Mr. Rogers. Rogers, no. All right. Did you vote, Paul? I, I did. I, I am a no. So that is two yeses and one, two, seven noes. Okay, that fails. We are moving back to item two, uh, the cleanup affiliation language and responsibilities better reacquaint ourselves with this and we had a primary and a substitute primaries up on the top substitutes down on the bottom i am so we're we're perfecting these we're perfecting the substitute first. And I believe the substitute was Mr. Latham's. So I'm going to give him Mike privileges to go first because everyone needs to get a little bit reacquainted with this. And thank you, Madam Chair. Did you get my second substitute? No. Can but you, you can't, you can't, well, you could do a substitute to the substitute, but then it can't be amended further. I'm okay with that. Um, I got to stop screen sharing because I have confidential emails. I can't show my... And just to explain, I think I put this in the list, sir, but there was just a concern that the substitute was just kind of stylistically going after state level stuff. So I just pulled those things out. And for example, where I proposed to replace jurisdiction or state with jurisdiction so that's out okay I'm it did having... still leave in some making the plural singular Ugh, i'm having a problem my zoom screen is screwed up i i can't even find where to get out of my hold on stop share there it is uh, zoom has gotten worse i swear um i don't know where it's at on the list Mr. Latham, I never saw it. I will check my emails. Maybe do resending would be because uh, this is you, right? Uh yes. Proposal you. And if I saw it, maybe I accidentally deleted it. Like if I acknowledged it, then obviously I saw it, but. Right. I do a lot of work on the bus and I'm finding the bumps have caused me problems. I wouldn't be the first email I've accidentally deleted. Fact, you, you replied and said, I'll get that in notes. Okay. okay. Well then I obviously my bad, if you could bump it. Um, to the list or to you, it might Doesn't be able to do Okay. All right. That hopefully has been sent. I hope the 
attachments went along for the ride? Looks like they did. I do not have it yet. Okay, here we go. Give me one sec, because I have to open it with Google Docs. And let me copy this over. Did you have anything further to speak to it? Because there's no further debates. I mean, uh, amendments allowed on this. You're already two levels deep. This is a substitute for a substitute. Um, I'm wondering why my email doesn't allow me to see what I just, there we go. Oh, I need Thank to share you. again. I'm having a, let me get, uh, everyone else needs to see this. Hold on. I just, I'm recalling from our debate, this would be a, a month ago, it, it seems. Um, I just recall some committee members saying they just liked the, some of the language a little better in the first substitute, but I believe it, it was you, Madam Chair, who objected just to the me wanting to get rid of the status, state level and jurisdiction stuff or sorry, the state stuff with jurisdiction. So that's gone. And now hopefully we're just left with the stuff that people love. And so that's that's what's in this new second substitute. Hey, Ms. Mr. Bracco? Uh, parliamentary inquiry. So if, so we currently have a main motion and a substitute. If we were to dispense with that, however it goes, could whatever the surviving, whether it's the older and a new main motion, could that then be substituted at that time? Yes. And then that substitute would be amendable, if that's a word. Yes. Okay, thank you. May, wait, hold on. Maybe not. You guys are super confusing me. We have a substitute for a substitute. We have to know. Well, one second. Uh, no, actually, no. It, it, and I'll tell you why. We got a we got a main motion and a substitute. Forget about the substitute for the substitute for a second. You got to perfect both of them now. Once you pass, like say you prefer the main motion over the substitute or the substitute over the main motion, it can't be amended further other than adding to it. A, a, a substitute is a strikeout and replace. It's, it's not adding to it. They need to be perfected now. So I told you wrong the first time. Was that all you had, Mr. Bracco? Yes. Okay. I'm going to debate what I said last time. Uh, I, with all due respect to Mr. Latham, I don't see any value added in either of the substitutes. The original motion is fine. And I, I, I think sometimes we are majoring on the minors when we have a lot of major things to deal with. The, the problem that I want, wanted to solve with my proposal is solved by the original one. Going through like where we have a substitute for a substitute on something that really the only purpose was to make sure these people give us their constitution and bylaws. And we're spending like an hour on all kinds of weird language with that. Like actually there was, th th there, there were three issues, but I mean, each of them, you had it. So we wouldn't take all comers. It needs to be 10 sustaining members and give us the, the constitution and bylaws. Why we're doing all this other potential rewording, why the problem is solved by the first one. So I just urge everyone to vote both of these down and just go with the first one. If there's a minor tweak to it, well, we can't, when we get to amending it, do the tweak there. Can we please not go substitutes for substitutes? Mr. Martin. Yeah, uh, 
So I'm looking up here at the top here, the problem that this is intended to solve, uh, reorganize the sentence to make it clear that there is no such duty to accept any petition. So then I look at the language here uh, in, in all of these proposed, in all of the substitutes and the main, uh, the national committee shall charter. So it, it, I, I'm just wondering whether or not that language requires the national committee to charter uh, a state level affiliate if they provide the petition and uh, and a copy of their bylaws. You know whether or not that you know, like you said, there may be good, other good reasons not to want to uh, take them on as an affiliate. Does this does this proposal or the substitutes actually give? that flexibility to the LNC, because it, it doesn't appear to me that it does. Okay, we, we answered this through a parliamentary inquiry when we first started debating this. Um, it does. Uh, I'm, sorry. To, I'm sorry if I missed yeah. that. Saying that they shall just means that the LNC can't decide we're not going to have state level affiliates. The, the thing that was making it sound like we potentially would have to take any cover uh, uh, comer was the from any qualifying organization. Now, I don't think it requires us to take any comer even with that language, but there was a dispute over that amongst the memberships. But to say the LNC shall do something just means that's their duty to charter state level affiliates. It doesn't mean they have to take every comer. Got it, thank you. If we put May in there, that means the National Committee could decide, now nah, we don't want affiliates and just disaffiliate a bunch of states. <laughs> like I, the, one of the duties of the, the National Committee is to charter state level affiliates. Right. OK, thank you. Mr. Latham. Did want to point out, I was looking again just to bring myself up to speed. One of the things that the substitutes have is the no more than one, uh, which was a concern to me. That is actually addressed in the next subsection. So Article 5.3, that's the very first sentence. There shall be no more than one state level affiliate party in any one state. So that's less of a concern to me. So but what what we are left with again is just trying to make it singular rather than plural. Um, so that's it. I'm, I'm, we're going to be going to a vote in a moment between this and then we're, we're getting close to closing time. The more red and blue that delegates see on the screen, the less likely they are to pass it. That's just psychological reality. Delegates don't like a screwing around this much with grammar. They just don't. Um, wish we had a style committee, but we don't. Um, me looking at all those changes and I was a delegate and this is dealing with affiliates and I have an affiliate and distrustful delegates thinking there's something sneaky being snuck in here and what are the implications of all of this putting in all these changes is just dooming this to fail mr Mormon. maybe Mullen? tell him he's got to unmute please unmute mr Mullen. Derp. that helps um yes I was wondering if we were close to uh, wrapping this particular provision or if I should note that orders of the day would say we should have wrapped this meeting 15 minutes ago. No, we, we, we end at nine. We have a two hour meeting. We started at seven. Oh, I am so sorry because yeah, I'm used to us ending at 45. My bad. Okay. Yeah. With my two hour commute after work, I barely got here at That's seven. Right. Uh, so and we did start four minutes late. We tend to end, we tend to okay. do a two hour meeting. So we are- Six minutes late. Yes. So we're, we're on a vote on whether the substitute to the substitute shall become the substitute. Um, is there an objection? Remember this doesn't pass it. It just makes the substitute to the substitute the substitute. Mr. Seebeck. Yeah, point of order. Can we can I just take a second and try to decipher what I'm seeing? Because it's hard to read. Could you could you blow it up just a what? slight bit on your screen? I 
And maybe can we clarify the bottom one is the second substitute? Yeah, this one at the very bottom is the second substitute. Okay, that helps. Thank and I, I, I can't see it. I'm, I, I hold on. I'm going to, I can't blow it up that big or I can't manipulate here. Uh, let me see. Uh, this, no, I, I can't. It doesn't. Uh, this is in the drive. People need to look on the drive if they can't see it. Because I need to be able to have all this on my screen. And if I make it bigger, it, it moves off my screen. So I'm going to. Let me try this a different way. What's the difference between the two? Jurisdiction, which was a problem in the first and substitute. I, and I pulled out deletions of state level, which appears three times. So state level stays. Okay, Are you ready, Mr. Seabeck? Yeah, thank you. Is there an objection to making the substitute to the substitute the substitute? Okay, uh, hearing none, now we are just at the one level. Which means don't say that five times fast. Yeah, which means it the, the substitute is up for further amendment. If there's no further amendment on the substitute, then the primary is up for further amendment. And Zoom is really cropping out. I can't see if anyone's hand is raised. So just verbalize if your hand is raised. Uh, I see well, Mr. Latham up at no, the top. No, Madam Chair, I was just gonna call the orders of the day. We still have three minutes. Um, oh, okay. Next meeting, someone else is going to need to handle the, the screen sharing, be it the secretary or maybe I'll ask Mr. Bracco or if Mr. Molman wants to. I can't chair the meeting and do this. It's it's too much. I might be able to swing that. Just I'll offer to try. Yeah, yeah ne next time because this is, is Zoom. Just it isn't working out when you have multiple screens. It's It's hiding everything. Okay. Are there any further amendments to the primary? Okay. You have to vocalize because I can't see hands. Okay. Well, I know there is objection to making the substitute the primary. So we're going to try to bust out a couple votes if we can in two minutes. The motion before us is shall the substitute motion become the primary motion. Neither of them can be amended further except by adding. So there's going to be two votes, though there can be a debate, but I anticipate two votes in rapid succession potentially. So shall the substitute motion become the main motion? Mr. Bracco, if you can take a roll call vote. Sure. Ms. Arrowwood? I'll come back. Uh, I will be a no. Mr. Soselski. Uh, I abstain. All right. Mr. Latham? Yes. Mr. Martin? No. Mr. Molman? I abstain. Mr. Roulette? Nope. Mr. Rufo? No. Mr. Seebeck? Abstain. Error was in chat. Uh, no. Thank you. So that is one yes, one, two, five no's, and three abstentions. We have a full committee, or is Dr. Moulton voting? Uh, no, uh, Mr. Soselski and Mr. Rufo have returned. Okay, got it. Okay, so we're on the main motion, no amendments to it. There can be further debate. We are at 
time, but if there's no further debate, we're getting this vote in. Seeing none, is there any objection to adopting the what's now the primary motion? Vocalize it if you do, because I can't see your hands. All right, seeing none, we're done with this proposal. And we're going to have some after adjournment comment because Mr. Jacobs asked. But I just want to let you guys know where we are. We will be starting with agenda item number three next meeting. And our next meeting is, didn't I put the dates down here? Well, it's two weeks from today. I thought I put the dates there. And just as a point of reference for folks, if you're interested in the discussion on suspendability of rules and, and, and bylaws created committees, it was a topic that came up before. We weren't going to debate it here because we already passed that proposal. You can go look at that link on, on the Roberts Forum. It probably make your eyes roll in the back of your head. Um, I, I don't even know if there was a conclusion. I know what conclusion I came to. Okay, so we are adjourned at 905 Mountain.